participants, all working together in one community. There is no doubt in my mind that the rabid success of the Washington Asset Building Coalition, which is barely three years old, to really catapult to national leadership is the, due to the crucial investment of the public sector in providing staffing for this work and the wise deployment of resources that really incense collaboration and coordination at the local level. Yet there's more to brag about. The Seattle King County Asset Building Coalition, which is one of the 15 local coalitions now in the state of Washington, is also a member of a group of seven cities, which are called Cities for Financial Empowerment, that operate on the cutting edge of innovation in the design and delivery of asset building programs and services. Many of you may be familiar with the Bank on Seattle program. This addresses the fact that 52,000 residents of Seattle and King County are either unbanked or underbanked, reflective of the stat st statistic I gave you before. It has the goal of opening 5,000 new accounts and really bringing those people into the banking system in 2009, working with 22 local banks and credit unions who are offering free or reduced account services. The coalition also manages an extensive EITC campaign that explicitly reaches out to childcare providers to help them navigate the tax system and take advantage of the same asset building subsidies such as the EITC that other families do. The city boasts one of the largest IDA programs in the country, along with other services ranging from foreclosure assistance to incenting employers to provide asset building services at the workplace, which is a whole new frontier. And finally, the Medina Foundation is incubating the startup of a low-income credit union with an affiliated nonprofit organization to deliver fair and affordable financial products to low-income families in King County. I view the connection between the asset building and education fields as the next area for innovation and impact. CFED is already engaged with the United Negro College Fund and a leading charter school network to integrate match savings and financial education with the existing infrastructure of financial aid, academic counseling, and educational debt. When I first met the president of UNCF, Michael Lomax, after he heard me talk about match savings, he came up to me and he said, you are my missing piece. He said, I may have 1.6 billion from the Gates Foundation. Where are they? <laughs> he says, but that's not enough. He says, I get to these kids too late, I don't have enough money, and they are dropping out, not because they are not achieving, it's because their families are so financially insecure that they can't make it through the end. It is this kind of integration, and in many ways what we just heard about the Foundation for Early Learning, that I think is going to help solve these very critical problems. So it is with this challenge that I return to the vision I shared at the start of my remarks. When every child born in America starts with the savings account. This vision has already been realized in Great Britain, where they have the UK Child Trust Fund. Every child born in Great Britain starts with an account in a financial institution that grows over time. It's true in the small city of Caguas, Puerto Rico, where the mayor decided this was going to be possible for every child born in the city, and it has just become true for every child born in Maine, where a local philanthropist, in his will, gave his entire fortune so that every child starts with an account with $500 in a 529 savings account. So as I look ahead, I really believe that without a universal children's savings policy in place, I will be back here in 10 years and telling you that 25% or maybe 30% of American families are asset poor. We don't change that number without changing how we invest. 
I believe that this vision is possible today, both at the national and state levels. This city and this region is uniquely gifted with resources, organizational capacity, philanthropic leadership, and political will to make the investments with the power to transform lives and create an opportunity structure that makes every parent a teacher and every child a learner. It is an honor for me to have had the opportunity to work and learn with those people in this room and in this state who make this vision come alive, one family and one child at a time. Thank you.